So, uh, I've come to the place in the show where I read you this week's installment of Ezekiel Kralin's ongoing tale of um, two little dogs and uh, and a friend who lives out in the street and has got a place in a small cabin where they house homeless people, and so things are looking up for everybody involved. And this is titled The Mysterious Case of the Missing Weed That Didn't Exist in the First Place. Ezekiel Kralin wrote, email correspondence, February 4th to the 7th, subject, He's Alive, date, February 4th. This morning, I discovered the toilets clogged. So Once again, I had to resort to a bag in a bucket. But an hour later, I decided to call the building manager, assuming that either no one would answer or perhaps our maintenance man, Victor, would. Well, when I dialed Kevin's number, he answered after three rings. He sounded kind of sick, but said hello. So I told him, our toilet's clogged. And he said, okay, I'll call the plumber. I also told him the exterminator had scheduled bed bug treatment this Monday at 2 p.m., who said he'll make arrangements with Victor. He then said thank you, and we hung up. I imagine Kevin is still in the hospital, or perhaps bedridden in his apartment and receiving care, or at a hospice or wherever. Needless to say, I'm disappointed He's still around, but at least the toilet will soon be working again. Cue appropriate video clip here, seen in the original Frankenstein movie where the mad scientist proclaims, It's alive! Subject, I heard their yelps and howls somewhere across the street. Date, February 5. Shortly after I returned to Hovel with my Rosenberg elixir about... 8.30 8.30 this morning, a fire engine had just careened down Market Street, and the pups were reacting to the siren. I'd know their voices anywhere, so I peered out my window, but saw neither hide nor fur of them, including Deke. I decided to step outside and track them down, crossing the street in the middle, because they weren't anywhere on my side of the block. As I walked up Market Street approaching Castro, I saw two umbrellas, one green, one brown, Tilted against a storefront, they formed a makeshift roof from the rain that fell about half an hour ago, but only lasted ten minutes. I saw the vagrant seated therein was someone other than Dick, and the pups not present, or the granny cart, but my binaural faculties told me this was exactly where they were when I heard their howls. I didn't bother to ask the gentleman if he saw a dude with two howling doggies drift by, but proceeded to the corner where Castro, Market, and 17th Street intersect. Though I peered carefully in all directions, they were nowhere to be seen. So I turned around and strolled hovelward, what probably occurred, Watson, was Deke was perambulating toward the Castro when I heard the pooches howl. He's such a fast walker, they were probably at least three blocks away, down some side street by the time I reached their intersection. Two hours later, though, he called up at my window, and asked me to charge one of his two speakers for just a half hour. Excuse me just a moment. Where was I? And bring the dogs some water and a meal, he added. I said, sure. Then pet and scritched the wee hounds before returning upstairs. Once I stepped back out and set the bowls down, Deek exclaimed, I know you said wait till Thursday, but I could sure use another hundred dollar right now. Not going to happen, Deke. That's ridiculous, I replied. I just gave you that much two days ago. You're going to have to wait till Thursday. No two ways about it. To my surprise, he didn't put up a fuss, and I returned upstairs until he wanted the speaker back 20 minutes later, though while futzing about in my room, I figured an advance payment of $50 would be doable, should he ask, as I'm certain he was not about to offer it, and I certainly was not about to offer it, So when I came downstairs with the speaker, I lingered with the doggies long enough to see if he'd do just that, and yep, he finally did. Well, could give me a few dollar now, say twenty? Okay, I can do that, I agreed. Tickled pink, he requested far less than what I anticipated, but let me see if I even have that much upstairs. I didn't. Found only fourteen dollars in my wallet, so I added twenty-four quarters from my laundry funds, Stashed, stashed in a soft, 12-ounce plastic tub that once held Greek black olives so many years ago I lost count. That's fine, he said, as I dropped the coins into his hand atop the bills. Twenty is twenty no matter how you break it down. Deke actually looks much healthier since he's acquired a roof over his head, and his temper tantrums have diminished in both frequency and clamor as well. Wouldn't it be something... 
if he winds up assisting other residents there on a volunteer basis, or even lands a paid position on the homeless outreach team. After all, if one miracle already happened, why shouldn't another, and another, and another, ad vitam eternum? By the way, another great reading of my latest tale by the inimitable Marshall McGee last Friday. I sometimes create a theme title for my narrated pieces rather than pluck it from a subject title of one of the missives contained therein. This one I called Crystalluria. I like how he introduced the piece. Crystalluria, whatever that means. Pronouncing the double L the Spanish way, though, that is incorrect. Hmm. I'm surprised I came up with a word he didn't know. It also implies he doesn't read any of my stories prior to narrating them, which makes for the occasional spontaneous side comment, thus sweetening the tale a bit more. Subject. Yesterday was great until... dot dot dot. February 7. He returned hours later, 3.45 a.m., started screaming, Fuck! 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 You have my weed, don't you? Fuck! 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 Up at my window. But first, let's rewind to earlier that evening. He visited around two hours from 9 to 11 by the curb and parking meter below my window. He did not resist my bringing down cardboard and two small sleeping bags for the pups, which have been heat-treated and sealed in a large trash bag, which he saw since I brought them outside still stashed in the bag. After I fed the pups and brought them water, he asked me to wash, uh, watch them for a short while so he and a friend could go to Walgreens two blocks up market. Sure, no problem, I said, and they took off wasn't quite half hour when they returned, and I had my usual doubtful time alone with Flacco and Lucky. Delightful time. Sorry. When he started packing up to leave, I came back downstairs to collect the blankets and cardboard and give the mutts a final round of hugs and kisses, wishing them all God's blessings and a lovely night before returning hovel. He also gave me a Cuisinart mini food processor, and though I already have one just like it, only a bit larger, I said, thanks, I can really use it. I opened the box later on, only to discover it was missing the spindle that turns the blades. Oh, well, he doesn't need to know that. It's hard for him to give me anything I can use, so it's better to praise him regardless. At any rate, I fell into a deep sleep less than ten minutes after turning on my smartphone and playing some horror tales. I was that pleased with this latest peaceful meet-up. However, unfortunately, he woke me up around 3.30 a.m., screaming those words cited above, so I stepped outside, barely awake, and he hollered at me some more. Things like, I must have gathered up his small bottle of weed in the sleeping bag, so I clambered back upstairs to check and discovered nothing. No, nope, I didn't. I told him once back outside, the dogs were resting on a large sheet of cardboard and nothing else, so that's unlikely. He brought stuff out of the cart sometime after I put the sleeping bags down. He walked all the way back from supposedly, quote, the other end of town to trace his steps, and he's sure he left the weed right where he parked in front of my building. I reminded him when he took off it was in the other direction toward the Castro, and besides, he's always losing stuff, and someone coming along after him probably picked it up. Not that I believed he had some pot on him. He's most likely guilt-tripping me again. He demanded I no longer bring blankets for the doggies because of this losing his weed incident. Funny, he didn't bring up the bed bugs instead, but he's got a problem on his hands if he thinks I'm going to allow the pooches to rest on the cold concrete while they're visiting, especially when the nights remain so chill. All he provided was a flattened-out trash bag. But, of course, I wouldn't allow it no matter what, even with the, even when the weather warms up. They deserve this simple comfort. It makes them so happy. He had pulled everything out of the granny cart and spread them across the sidewalk in hopes of finding the, quote, missing grass, cussing like a madman, which grass didn't exist in the first place, or if it did, that's certainly no excuse to screech in front of my building and make false accusations. But get this, Watson. It wasn't until he finally left, about ten minutes later, still screaming, fuck, fuck, that it dawned on me. The doggies weren't with him. He's not allowed to leave them alone at the shelter, so what really went on? Did he tie them up to a post two or three blocks up? And if so, did he have someone watch them? This is disturbing, Watson, and I know asking him about it would be pointless. 
I couldn't return to Slumberville for the rest of the night, but did enjoy the scary narrations gratis YouTube. So now I have to deal with Deke's latest bullshit while living out of a bag of heat-treated clothes for deity only knows how long, so I won't be forced to reheat everything. One shirt, one sweater, one pair of jeans, and a warm jacket. The rest stay sealed for as long as need be. I don't know about you, Morticia, but next time a Chinese balloon floats over our country, I'm going to lasso myself to it and hitch a ride out of this Verschluggener curse of a nation and take the doggies with me. To be continued. Hmm. 